welcome to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today, I have a history episode for you. And for my CC students, this correlates with week 23 of the memory work. So that means we're going to be talking about the Gulf War. In particular, we're going to be talking about how American President George H. Bush got involved in expelling Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein from Kuwait and the ramifications and what happened after that. So remember, if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button to the Doodling Through Education channel so you never miss an episode. On that note, let's go ahead and start doodling. In August of 1988, the long Iraq-Iran war had finally reached a ceasefire due to the United Nations helping the two countries reach this outcome. Two years later, they had not yet agreed to a permanent peace treaty, and this was a problem. But it was thought at this time that Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein was prepared to make peace by putting aside this conflict that had raged for so long. It was also thought that he may also return territory that his forces had long occupied. But unfortunately, in July of 1990, Hussein delivered a speech that accused Kuwait of stealing oil along their shared border and conspiring to keep oil prices low. Along with his speech, he began to assemble troops along Kuwait's border. This was an alarming escalation to Egypt, who then tried to intervene and help to avoid any further escalation. So they arranged a meeting. But Saddam Hussein broke off this meeting after only two hours and quickly ordered the invasion of Kuwait on August 2nd, 1990. Two thirds of the 21 members of the Arab League condemned Iraq's act of aggression and turned to the United States and other members of NATO or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization for support. President George H.W. Bush of the United States, along with the governments of Britain and the Soviet Union, immediately condemned the invasion. On August 3rd, the United Nations Security Council called for Iraq to withdraw from Kuwait. When they did not, on August 8th, the first U.S. Air Force fighter planes began arriving in Saudi Arabia as part of a military buildup of their own, dubbed Operation Desert Shield. In Kuwait, Iraq increased its occupation forces to about 300,000 troops and then tried to raise support from the Muslim community by declaring a holy war against the coalition that the United States had built up with other countries. By January 1991, the coalition forces prepared to face off against Iraq with numbers ranging into 750,000. This included 540,000 U.S. soldiers and smaller forces from the countries of Britain, France, Germany, the Soviet Union, Japan, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia, among other nations. Early on the morning of January 17, 1991, a massive U.S.-led air offensive hit Iraq's air defenses. It moved swiftly to take out their communication networks, their weapon plants, their oil refineries, and more. This effort was known as Operation Desert Storm and benefited greatly from the latest military technology. The objective of this mission was to minimize ground attacks 
and in doing so, keep people safe on the coalition forces side. By mid-February, these coalition forces had shifted the focus of their air attacks toward Iraqi ground forces in Kuwait and southern Iraq. A massive Allied ground offensive titled Operation Desert Sabre was launched on February 24th of the same year, with troops heading from northeastern Saudi Arabia into Kuwait and then southern Iraq. Over the next four days, coalition forces circled and defeated the Iraqis and triumphantly liberated Kuwait. Due to this, Iraqi resistance was nearing collapse, so Bush declared a ceasefire on February 28, 1991, ending this Gulf War. According to the peace terms that Hussein accepted, Iraq would recognize Kuwait's sovereignty and independence and get rid of all its weapons of mass destruction, which included nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. In all, an estimated 8,000 to 10,000 Iraqi forces were killed in comparison with only 300 coalition troops. Though the Gulf War was recognized as a decisive victory for the coalition, Kuwait and Iraq still suffered damage. And Saddam Hussein was not forced from power, which ended up causing problems later on. But we will talk about those another time. That's all we have for this history episode today. This event happened not very long ago, only about 30 plus years ago. So talk with your parents, see if they remember this happening, how old they were, or talk with your grandparents because they may remember this as well. And I'm sure that they have lots of ideas and um, accounts of what they experienced here in America or wherever you live during that time. So on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.